Hey guys, welcome to a new architectural series. Pretty much this series is going to be focusing on transitioning from AutoCAD to Revit. Now, I picked this project from Technical Drawings 101 with AutoCAD 2022. It's a small cabin that pretty much has a floor plan dedicated to it. It is a capstone project in the book. It has elevation that has all the tags on it. It has foundation plan. It has an electrical plan. Now, the reason I'm picking this project is first, it's small enough for us to exercise all the commands in Revit and how to understand Revit quickly. I know in the past I have covered far larger projects like a multi-story apartment or I've covered a office building. And what I found is that whenever you cover something that large, you end up running into tedious tasks. Let's say if I was placing windows on like two-story house, I'll end up placing windows all over the room and then I'll go again and place it on the second floor and that repetitive task doesn't allow you to learn much Revit except just how to duplicate the command over and over again. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started in Revit. The first thing I'm going to do is open Revit. My Revit opens like this. I have previous projects here, but you guys will probably have just sample projects. I'm going to go ahead and select new in our model and I'm going to browse a template. Now the template I'm going to default to has to be a residential template because we're doing a small cabin. And again, if you don't have the book, if you follow step by step, this should be more than enough. So I'm going to go ahead and select residential default, press open, and then press OK. Now another thing you probably notice is that you can look at my keyboard right now. I'm going to try to focus on having my left hand on the keyboard as I draft. So you guys know exactly what keys I'm hitting when I'm cycling through tab or I'm typing in WA. I'm going to be typing in those commands here. Now, some of you guys already have this set up, but let's talk about it. There's a quick access toolbar up top. You have your tabs here, like the architectural tab, structural tab, steel, and so on and so forth. You have your panels here. This is the build panel, circulation panel, model panel. And pretty much this is how panels work. You have your properties bar and your project browser. Now, if you don't have those things or either of those things, you can go into the view tab under your user interface. You're going to go ahead and turn on your project browser and you're going to turn on your properties. Now, this will allow you to have properties here and project browser. Again, this is a personal preference. Some people will take these and actually drop them onto a second monitor if they actually have a secondary display. But in this case, I'm just going to leave them on the side. Over here, you have your visuals, how your projects are look, what's hidden, what shows, right? And we're always going to stay in main model for this project. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set levels. Originally, you should be directly under first floor plan. So by default, you're under the first floor plan, which is here. Under your project browser, if you save on that view, that's the first view that's going to open. Anytime you open a view, it gets added up here in tabs. So I'm going to try to open my north view. Notice when I open my north view, it got added here. And then the first floor plan is still here. Since this is just a log cabin, I'm going to go ahead and delete the roof datum point. And whenever you delete a datum point, it has corresponding views. For example, if I was to create a roof floor plan, it's going to use the roof datum as a reference. So I'm going to be deleting all these views. And you're going to say, go ahead and delete them. Same thing with basement. We're in Houston. We don't have a basement. It's a log cabin, so it's not going to be complex. And I'm going to go ahead and delete all these views that are associated with those three datum points. Now I'm left with these. Now, instead of foundation, I'm going to simply click on the foundation once. And you see the words here. I'm going to change that to finish grade. You're going to change the corresponding view. Press yes. And then I'm going to change the height. I don't want it negative 1 feet 3. I want it negative 1 feet 6 inches. Again, all of this can be referenced on page 478 of the book that we're referencing. First floor starts at 0, 0. We'll leave it as that. Second floor, let's call this top of plate because we're doing it for construction. And you're going to rename the corresponding views. Go ahead and say yes. And since this is a 8-foot stud, 
Let's make the top of plate height as 8 foot dash 1.5 inch. So you have your double top plate, you have a singular plate, so you got yourself there. So this is what you're looking at as all your datum points. Now along the future we might add some more datum points for roof or chimney and so on and so forth, but for now that's your datum point. Let's go back to the first floor. You can go into the project browser, scroll up and click here, but you already have the first floor open so it's faster to click here. Again, we're talking about speed here. Now I can type in WA, uh, unlike AutoCAD you can't hit L enter. All your commands are instantly entered the moment you type in the two letters associated with the command. So you can go into the architectural tab, select walls, and go wall architectural, or I can go WA, and it automatically puts me in the command. Now, the wall that we're using for our exterior is going to be an exterior wood siding on wood stud. Whenever we specify that, then we have the properties associated with that wall. Now the properties associated with that wall is, is going to be drawn from center line. Like if I start drawing that wall right now, it's referencing from the center line of that wall. I don't want that. I want to start from the exterior face finish because that's where all my dimensions are coming from. The base constraints mean this is where my wall is at the lowest, which means it's at the first floor which is fine, it's not at finish grade. Top constraints, I'm gonna go ahead and shift that to top of plate. So my height for my wall, and this is my temporary modify panel up here, is the height goes to top of plate, which is eight, and a, eight feet, one and a half inch tall, and my location line is finished face exterior. And the wall are chained together, which means they'll be connected together. So I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing them. And I have these four elevation viewports. I'm going to try to draw between that. And this project's small enough where you can do that. So 24 feet wide. I'm going to go down and draw downwards. All of these dimensions can be found on page 455 of our reference book. But I'm going to go ahead and type them out. 17 feet dash 9 inches. Then I'm going to go over outwards. To three foot dash four inches. Then I'm going to go down three foot eight. Go over three foot four. Go down again ten foot seven. Then go over fifteen feet dash four inches. Then go up four feet, three foot four, then go up four feet, and then go over 12 feet. You guys get that idea? We're pretty much letting the command do it for us. So we have gone 12 feet. So over here, four feet and a half inch. So four feet, that's 0.5 inches. We're using quotation marks for the inches and apostrophe for feet. Just like any other software. Then we're going out two foot two. Two foot dash two inches. Then we're going to go up four feet dash two inches. Then we go across two feet dash two inches. And then we're going to go all the way to the top, like so, connecting the whole thing together. Now, to verify your dimensions, how do you dimension a building? So under the Annotate tab, you're going to go under Dim Align. But I'm going to use the command DI. So dimension DI. Whenever you cycle through your selection, anytime you hover over a wall, it will always point to the center line. And I don't want a dimension to the center line. I want a dimension from exterior, the dimension I gave you. So I'm going to cycle through tab, and it cycle, cycles through all of the selection there. If I select here, then I go all the way across, and I hit tab again. That's my actual width of my entire building. Then, and this is how we're going to learn to dimension. So that's the overall dimension. Cycle through tab again, 
And this time I'm gonna do all the ins and outs. So all my ins and outs are here and they're all being selected on one string. So this goes out two feet, two inches. This goes out three foot four and so on and so forth. Let's do the other side. So I'm gonna go from here all the way down. That's how my building is. Tab again to select from that wall to this wall. And that's the entirety of the distance. Then I'm gonna go ahead and tab select from here, tab here, and then notice how it's making the spacing for me. And then if I choose to continue the string, I just simply, simply keeps clicking. Now another thing you guys probably have noticed is my dimensions, are they the right height? Yes, so pretty much if you're looking at a quarter inch scale and you print it at quarter inch scale, this is how the dimension will be. If I print it at three quarter, they're gonna be significantly smaller. Why? Because that's how it'll print on paper. This will be printed much larger and it'll be smaller text. And in this case, it'll be printed at quarter inch, so the text will be slightly bigger. So Revit is very smart when it comes to that. Let's go ahead and cover all the sides. And in this case, I'm gonna do all the ins and outs. So I'm selecting here, selecting there. And if you hear that noise, that's an error noise. That's you did something or you hit escape too many times. So that's that. So I'm getting the overall width here. Notice how 29 feet, six inches is the same thing as here, 29 feet, six inches, different ins and outs here. And again, this is how the strings will be run on site. So we're doing this for construction. So all the ins and outs should be caught here. Now I'm doing the ins and out first on this string, but ultimately it should be the overall string dimension first. Notice when I hit tab, there was nothing there to select. And that's that. So with all of our exterior walls done, what we're looking at is, let's go ahead and start modifying walls. I'm, I have a two by six exterior. So whenever I select the wall, all the walls have a type parameter or an instance parameter. So a type parameter means that all of the walls will be changed when you change these properties. I'm gonna select edit type and I'm gonna edit the structure. Some of you guys will have it slightly different. I have my parameters all stretched out the way it is because I read all the BTUs and heat transfer and all that stuff. But some of you guys will not have that. So I'm gonna go ahead and select edit next to structure. So in my edit is right here. I'm gonna select that. And under here, I'm gonna change the structural width. And I can show you this in preview. So this is my thickness of my wall. So for going from the exterior to the interior, the structure in the middle is five and a half inches. Again, nominal wood sizes versus actual wood sizes. This is a two by six stud. So I'm gonna change that to three and a half. So this is a two by four stud now. I'm gonna say okay, and this makes it smaller. Apply okay. It changed all my walls to two by fours. Notice by how none of my dimension changed because we were going from finished face exterior to finished face exterior. Lastly, as we conclude this exercise, I'm gonna change the detail level to fine so we can actually see all the exterior lines as well. So we can see how the gypsum board, wood stud, our uh, exterior sheathing, and then our siding on the outside. We can also look at it in 3D. This is what our building looks like as of now. And then we'll go back to our first floor, save the project, save the project, and I will see you on the next exercise. Follow for more content 